Okay, so time for the task. Obviously, that is to mix the song using all the stuff we've talked about now. I'm going to go through in a brief way, maybe a certain um, system or process you can use to do this, and then you can get going on it yourself. There's so many ways to mix a song. This is just one method. We're going to talk about a whole uh, bunch of different systems as we go through Lydian, like different ways that people mix songs. Some people mix songs during the composing process, like you mix as you go. Some people wait till everything is done and then they mix them. Some people get other people to mix their music. There's so much you can do. Right now we're going to do it this way. We've made our song. We've got the whole arrangement. Now we're going to do the mix after that's done. And even, even in this method, there's lots of different variables, different ways that you can do it. So here's one way. The first thing is to put a loop around the main part of your track. So this is my main loop right here. And step one is to get a volume balance. Now you've probably done some of this already as you've been composing the song, but now is the time to really listen. And when we're going to do a volume balance, we want to listen quite quietly. When we turn up the volume a lot, our hearing actually changes. The way we hear frequencies changes, and we might think that things are too loud that actually aren't too loud and vice versa. So it's good to mix at a low volume, and then you can turn it up if you want and listen to it a little bit louder, turn it back down, listen to it quieter. But when you're doing the actual mixing, it's good to listen at a fairly low volume. So I've got my loop here set up around the main uh, loop of the song, and I'm just gonna push play, go to my mixer, my console, and start touching some faders here until things sound roughly in balance. So the first thing I notice is that my bells are quite loud, so I'm gonna bring them down a bit. And I'm really focusing on what's the main element. The main element's the flute. That's the most important part, it's playing the melody. So I want that to be very clear. And then I'm thinking of order of importance underneath that. What's the next most important element, next most important, and so on, so that I always have that, that order of importance in mind, and I can balance the next element and make sure that this more important element stays the focus and doesn't get overpowered by something else. So with the flute in mind, the guitar is actually a little bit loud. So I'm doing a scan, a mental scan right now of all the elements. I'm looking at all the faders. I'm going to leave drums as kind of my reference point that I'm going to balance everything to. Then the flute is the main element to, uh, to be in focus. And then I'm looking at everything else that's playing and tuning my ears into that element and seeing how does it stack up against the rest. So that feels pretty good for a rough balance. We're going to be doing some more balancing as we go, so we just want to get a rough idea. I'm going to move my loop to another section of the song where I have some different uh, instruments going on, such as I have this uh, guitar that comes in here and I have the piano. So I'm going to loop this section so that I can balance those new instruments against the other ones. And before I start doing that, I know that my guitar, this thing, has some volume automation, if we t take a look at it right here. And that means that my fader is not gonna work, right? If I move this fader and push play, it's gonna go right back to where it was because it's getting that information from the automation, not from the fader position that I'm trying to set. So if I wanna change the, the volume of this track and still have automation, I have to use an insert to do that now. So I'm gonna come down to Personas, and I'm gonna get something called Mix Tool. And this mix tool has a gain knob. Gain basically means volume. And I can use this to balance the volume of my track now instead of my fader. So I will take a listen to that. I'll get it out of solo first. It actually feels pretty good just like that, but I'll leave it here in case I need it. And that'll go for any tracks that have volume automation on them. I'll use mix tool to control their uh, volume. Okay, so I feel like I've got a pretty good sense of my volume balance in the main sections of the song. The only thing left to make sure is balanced is uh, are these little effects like the sweep and the reverse piano. These things I've got going on. They feel pretty good already. I, I did a pretty good job balancing, balancing them as I made the track, um, but it's good to go check over those um, 
little one-shot things you have in there that don't loop, that just, that just come in from time to time to make sure that they're sitting right. And if all is well with that, I'm going to come back to my main loop and I'm going to turn my attention to panning and see if I can move anything around the stereo spectrum left and right a little bit um, to create more space in the mix. So if I play this main loop, first thing I'm thinking is that this guitar, I could pan off to maybe the left just a little bit. And you may find that when you pan things, they suddenly sound like they're a little bit louder because when everything was down the middle, it's all competing with each other. But as soon as you give it a little space like this, you can hear it more clearly. So I might need to adjust my volume on some of the panned elements now that I've uh, pushed it out. So I'll see how that is. This guitar does feel a little bit loud. side. So you can see I'm not panning them all the way, far left and far right. You can totally do that and you should experiment with it. I'm keeping them a little bit within. Sometimes when something gets super far panned, it can feel a little bit strange, but sometimes it can feel great. So it just, just depends on the instrument, what it's playing, what part of the song it's in, what kind of effect you're going for. That's called hard panning, when you go far left or far right. So I'm going somewhere a little bit more in the middle, so there's still a little bit of the sound coming out of this ear when it's panned this way and vice versa. On the topic of panning, I don't really want to pan my uh, main melody. I'd like it to be right down the middle so that it's the focus. Same goes with my drums and my bass. Now the drums, because they're loops, I already have a little bit of panning in the loops, like the hi-hats might be off to one side or something like that. But generally, your kick drum and your snare drum will stay right down the middle, your bass will stay right down the middle, your melody will probably stay right down the middle as well, and all the other elements you can decide where to put them. And there might be important elements, like say the chords, which if I pan the chords off to one side, my mix might start to sound a little bit lopsided. I'll give an example. Now the chords are far right. And it kind of feels like this side is hollow compared to this side. Because the chords are such a thick, large sounding element, it's probably good to have them somewhere near center so that they fill up both sides, both ears equally. So I'm gonna leave them at center as well. I like the panning I've got here. I'm just gonna go over to my other section and make sure that the panning sounds good there as well. This guitar part I have is, is uh, panning through its automation already, going side to side. So if I wanted to go in and change any of its panning, I'd have to go into the automation and go to panning and then change what I've done here because that's where it's learning about its panning information is the automation is telling it what to do, basically. That's where, um, that's how it knows which side to be on. If I go and try to change this parameter, put it in the middle, as soon as I play it, it's gonna reset, just like the volume. Anything with automation is gonna do that. The automation is gonna take over and whatever moves you make are not gonna have an effect unless you make those moves in the automation itself. So that means like right in here. But I like how it's doing that, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. Okay, so volume, check, panning, check. Now it's time for reverb and delay. So I'm gonna come back over to my main loop again. I'll loop this. And I'm going to start thinking about what instruments do I want to put my reverb and delay on. So we talked about some of that in the previous videos, and this is up to you to make that judgment call. The only things I would recommend being cautious about is putting reverb and delay on your uh, bass and on your drums. Everything else is fair game, and you should try out all sorts of things. Just put different um, kinds of reverb on, different kinds of delay, see what they do. But again, think about the order of it. The delay probably should go first going into the reverb rather than the reverb first going into the delay. If you happen to have done it the other way around, such as taking this guitar part and maybe I put a reverb on it like room reverb and then I had also put a analog delay on it but the delay was after, 
I can grab the delay and just drag it up and put it first. So I can reorder my inserts just by dragging them around like this. So delay going into reverb, probably the better way to go. So I've got some reverb and delay applied in my main loop here. Here's my guitar. Here's the bells. Here's the flute. Turn off the inserts. Super dry. Back on. Now I'm going to move on to the other part of the song again and check if that guitar or anything over there um, needs some reverb and delay as well. So over in this section, I put some reverb on the second guitar. I put some on the piano. Because both of these things are not short notes, they hold for a long time, the reverb blends in much more and it's not so distinct unless I push stop and start like that, which is totally fine, but it will add to the ambience of the track if you have reverb on them because those sounds will kind of expand into both ears a little bit more and change a little bit over time. So all together. So now that I've gone through and put the reverb that I want on all the parts that I want so far, the last job is to listen through the whole song a few times and listen at different volumes, listen on your headphones, listen on your computer speakers, hear it in different ways and different things will stand out to you. What you're listening for is anything that jumps out and feels weird or wrong. So you listen at a quiet volume and if some element comes in that's suddenly too loud, it feels like, oh, that just jumped out of the mix. You have to go in there and push it down a little bit in terms of volume or put some reverb on it so it sinks backwards a little bit and feels like it's in a space. When you're listening through the whole song, you're just going through with a fine tooth comb to make sure that everything is just how you want it. And after you do this a number of times, you're probably going to get sick of the song. That's part of the process, unfortunately. But by that time, you'll be sure that all the elements are sounding just like you want them to. And then the song is ready to be exported after that. So that's the job now. The end of the task would be to listen through the entire song. And if you're completely satisfied, then you're ready to move on. And we can export this song and make a audio file out of it, an MP3 file. So have fun with the mixing challenge. Experiment, try things, see what it sounds like. The last thing I'll say is if you're ever unsure about a step you're going to take, go File, Save As, and call it something new, such as Amazonia Mix or Amazonia V2 or V whatever it happens to be. Because then if you try something crazy and you mess a whole bunch of stuff up, you can always go back to your other version. So using save as and making new versions is a great way to be able to try things without worrying about what's going to happen. So have fun with that and I'll see you in the next one.